Malaysian University English Test, Session 3, 2018. Listening. Instructions to Candidates. The test consists of three parts, Part 1, Part 2 and Part 3. Each part comprises a recording. You will listen to each recording twice. Answer the questions as you listen. Circle or write your answers on the question paper. The test begins. You are given one minute to read all the questions. Part 1. Listen to a talk about dust mites. Based on the talk, answer questions 1 to 8. Are you suffering from some form of allergy or asthma? Then there is a big possibility that a tiny creature is lurking in your home, causing you misery. This tiny creature is called dust mites. Dust mites may be the most common trigger of allergies and asthma. Dust mites are survivors. They survive in every continent except the Antarctica. In warm and humid countries like Singapore and Malaysia, they can be found by the billions. Why do you think this is so? It's because they thrive best at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. They reproduce by laying eggs and each female will lay between 50 to 80 eggs every month. They are very tiny creatures, about one quarter of a millimetre in size, so you cannot see them with your naked eye. Under a microscope, they look like white bugs. But wait, these white bugs have eight legs, so they are not insects, but they are arthropods like spiders. Where can we find dust mites? They can be found in carpets, beddings, pillows, sofas, curtains, and even stuffed toys. They feed mainly on the dead skin dropped off from humans and pets. On average, an adult person may produce up to 1.5 gram of dead skin per day. That is enough to feed 1 million dust mites. And these dust mites, they don't actually bite. It is their body parts and droppings that cause the irritation on your skin and nasal passages. Each mite can produce about 20 droppings a day. And each dropping is 10 times smaller than a strand of human hair. Although tiny, in large numbers, the droppings can cause a lot of allergic reactions and itching. The National University Hospital of Singapore reported that 9 out of 10 people are allergic to dust mite droppings. Common allergy symptoms include sneezing, runny nose, watery eyes, coughing, an itchy nose, mouth and throat. Even worse, dust mite allergies can cause asthmatic attacks. Asthmatic attacks include difficulty in breathing, chest pain, wheezing cough and having trouble sleeping. Certain medicines may help reduce allergy symptoms caused by dust mites. These medicines come in the form of pills, liquid, nose sprays or nose drops. Some may be purchased at pharmacies without any prescription. But you must always check with your doctors first before using these medicines because some can cause side effects like sleeplessness and increased blood pressure. Dust mites can be avoided by limiting your exposure to them. 
it is nearly impossible to completely get rid of them in your environment, but you can use dustproof covers for your mattresses and pillows. You should wash bed sheets, blankets and rugs weekly in hot water. You can also use special vacuum cleaners to get rid of mites and mite droppings. Finally, you should avoid having wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. You are now given one minute to answer questions 1 to 8. You will listen to the talk again. Check your answers. Are you suffering from some form of allergy or asthma? Then there is a big possibility that a tiny creature is lurking in your home, causing you misery. This tiny creature is called dust mites. Dust mites may be the most common trigger of allergies and asthma. Dust mites are survivors. They survive in every continent except the Antarctica. In warm and humid countries like Singapore and Malaysia, they can be found by the billions. Why do you think this is so? It's because they thrive best at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. They reproduce by laying eggs and each female will lay between 50 to 80 eggs every month. They are very tiny creatures about one quarter of a millimetre in size, so you cannot see them with your naked eye. Under a microscope, they look like white bugs. But wait, these white bugs have eight legs. So they are not insects, but they are arthropods like spiders. Where can we find dust mites? They can be found in carpets, beddings, pillows, sofas, curtains, and even stuffed toys. They feed mainly on the dead skin dropped off from humans and pets. On average, an adult person may produce up to 1.5 gram of dead skin per day. That is enough to feed 1 million dust mites. And these dust mites, they don't actually bite. It is their body parts and droppings that cause the irritation on your skin and nasal passages. Each mite can produce about 20 droppings a day. And each dropping is 10 times smaller than a strand of human hair. Although tiny, in large numbers, the droppings can cause a lot of allergic reactions and itching. The National University Hospital of Singapore reported that 9 out of 10 people are allergic to dust mite droppings. Common allergy symptoms include sneezing, runny nose, watery eyes, coughing, and itchy nose, mouth and throat. Even worse, dust mite allergies can cause asthmatic attacks. Asthmatic attacks include difficulty in breathing, chest pain, wheezing cough, and having trouble sleeping. Certain medicines may help reduce allergy symptoms caused by dust mites. These medicines come in the form of pills, liquid, nose sprays or nose drops. Some may be purchased at pharmacies without any prescription. But you must always check with your doctors first before using these medicines because some can cause side effects like sleeplessness and increased blood pressure. Dust mites can be avoided by limiting your exposure to them. It is nearly impossible to completely get rid of them in your environment, but you can use dustproof covers for your mattresses and pillows. 
you should wash bed sheets, blankets and rugs weekly in hot water. You can also use special vacuum cleaners to get rid of mites and mite droppings. Finally, you should avoid having wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. Part 2. Listen to a conversation between two friends, Ronnie and Maya. Based on the conversation, answer questions 9 to 14. Hey Ronnie, I heard we will be getting our student loan next week. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. The first thing I'm going to do is to buy a computer. Oh, your previous computer crashed just recently, right? So have you decided which computer you're going to buy? Not yet. It's so confusing. There's just so many choices out there and I do have to keep an eye out for the best price. That's the most important. I think you better get yourself sorted out. There's no point waiting until you walk into a shop. It sounds like you need to do some research of your own. OK, let me help. Have you decided on how much you are going to spend? Well, I'm not going to finish off all the money, if that's what you mean. I can't afford more than 3,000 ringgit. That still leaves me plenty to choose from. OK, next question is, are you brand conscious? Not really, as long as it's a brand I recognise. Well-known brands have a reputation to maintain, so they generally give good after-sales service. It's been so hectic lately, since I don't have my own computer. It's so difficult trying to use the computers in the library, and I can't afford to spend much time at the cyber cafe. I already have three assignments I need to do some research for. Why don't you keep your options open? Hmm, with your budget, you could even buy a desktop. That is if you're interested. Desktop? Oh no, that would chain me to my hostel room. I need a powerful notebook so I can get around. And it's great that the whole campus has Wi-Fi so I can be online anywhere. So are you going to use it for research only? Mm, well, for internet research and completing assignments, of course. But you know me, it's not all about study, study, study. I want to be able to play games and watch videos as well. I'll have plenty of photos to store too. And of course, browsing through social media so that I can keep in touch with my friends. You'd better get a powerful notebook if you want to use lots of graphics, designing or programming. You should be able to keep within your budget. Hey, I'm majoring in business management, not software programming. Anyway, since you seem to know a lot more than I do, will you do me a favour? And come with me when I buy my computer? No problem. Just let me know when you want to go. Thanks. You are now given one minute to answer questions 9 to 14. You will listen to the conversation again. Check your answers. Hey, Ronnie. I heard we will be getting our student loan next week. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. The first thing I'm going to do is to buy a computer. Oh, your previous computer crashed just recently, right? So have you decided which computer you're going to buy? Not yet. It's so confusing. There's just so many choices out there. And I do have to keep an eye out for the best price. That's the most important. I think you better get yourself sorted out.
there's no point waiting until you walk into a shop. It sounds like you need to do some research of your own. Okay, let me help. Have you decided on how much you are going to spend? Well, I'm not going to finish off all the money, if that's what you mean. I can't afford more than 3,000 ringgit. That still leaves me plenty to choose from. Okay, next question is, are you brand conscious? Not really, as long as it's a brand I recognise. Well-known brands have a reputation to maintain, so they generally give good after-sales service. It's been so hectic lately, since I don't have my own computer. It's so difficult trying to use the computers in the library, and I can't afford to spend much time at the cyber cafe. I already have three assignments I need to do some research for. Why don't you keep your options open? Hmm, with your budget, you could even buy a desktop. That is, if you're interested. Desktop? Oh no, that would chain me to my hostel room. I need a powerful notebook so I can get around. And it's great that the whole campus has Wi-Fi so I can be online anywhere. So are you going to use it for research only? Mm, well, for internet research and completing assignments, of course. But you know me, it's not all about study, study, study. I want to be able to play games and watch videos as well. I'll have plenty of photos to store too. And of course, browsing through social media so that I can keep in touch with my friends. You'd better get a powerful notebook if you want to use lots of graphics, designing or programming. You should be able to keep within your budget. Hey, I'm majoring in business management, not software programming. Anyway, since you seem to know a lot more than I do, will you do me a favour and come with me when I buy my computer? No problem. Just let me know when you want to go. Thanks. Part 3. Listen to part of a conversation. Based on the conversation, answer questions 15 and 16. So, where are you taking your family for the upcoming holiday? The plan is to take the children to Universal Studios in Singapore. But I'm really worried about the usual traffic during holidays. Mm. Why don't you try taking a train from Kuala Lumpur to Singapore? It is one of the easiest, cheapest and most comfortable ways to get from Kuala Lumpur to Singapore without having to worry about traffic. You also don't have to worry about meals or rest stops. The train is also very safe and probably is the safest way to get from Kuala Lumpur to Singapore. Oh wow, you know a lot. Tell me more about this train trip to Singapore. Well, as far as I know, the trip is about six hours. And you know what? The long train ride is the perfect way for children and their parents to spend quality time together and bond with one another. Activities such as playing board games or cards will surely be enjoyable for everyone. I bet it will definitely be a memorable experience for you and your family. Sounds like a great plan to me. Thanks for the info. You are now given one minute to answer questions 15 and 16. You will listen to the conversation again. Check your answers. So, where are you taking your family for the upcoming holiday? The plan is to take the children to Universal Studios in Singapore. But I'm really worried about the usual traffic during holidays. Mm. 
why don't you try taking a train from Kuala Lumpur to Singapore? It is one of the easiest, cheapest and most comfortable ways to get from Kuala Lumpur to Singapore without having to worry about traffic. You also don't have to worry about meals or rest stops. The train is also very safe and probably is the safest way to get from Kuala Lumpur to Singapore. Oh, wow, you know a lot. Tell me more about this train trip to Singapore. Well, as far as I know, the trip is about six hours. And you know what? The long train ride is the perfect way for children and their parents to spend quality time together and bond with one another. Activities such as playing board games or cards will surely be enjoyable for everyone. I bet it will definitely be a memorable experience for you and your family. Sounds like a great plan to me. Thanks for the info. Listen to a piece of advice. Based on the advice, answer questions 17 and 18. When you write a job application letter, there are some things that you don't need to include in the cover letter that you write. For instance, if you don't have all the qualification the employer is seeking, don't mention it. Instead, focus on what you have. If you have questions about the job or the benefits, it's not appropriate to mention them in the letter. Also, don't mention your expected salary unless the employer asks for it. One thing that's very important is don't write too much. Keep your letter focused and concise, as all your details should already be in your CV. If you write too much, the chances are nobody is going to read it and your effort will all be wasted. Remember, a well-written letter will catch the employer's attention. It will definitely get your job application noticed and help you secure an interview. Take the time to personalise it so that it will show the employer why you are a solid candidate for the job. You are now given one minute to answer questions 17 and 18. You will listen to the advice again. Check your answers. When you write a job application letter, there are some things that you don't need to include in the cover letter that you write. For instance, if you don't have all the qualification the employer is seeking, don't mention it. Instead, focus on what you have. If you have questions about the job or the benefits, it's not appropriate to mention them in the letter. Also, don't mention your expected salary unless the employer asks for it. One thing that's very important is don't write too much. Keep your letter focused and concise, as all your details should already be in your CV. If you write too much, the chances are nobody is going to read it and your effort will all be wasted. Remember, a well-written letter will catch the employer's attention. It will definitely get your job application noticed and help you secure an interview. Take the time to personalise it so that it will show the employer why you are a solid candidate for the job.
Listen to a talk about handwriting. Based on the talk, answer questions 19 and 20. Did you know that your handwriting can tell a lot about you? The study of handwriting, or graphology, has been practiced for hundreds of years. Graphologists study writing samples to determine personality types and they are able to read how a person is like through the handwriting. From physiological conditions like high blood pressure or schizophrenia to personality traits like dominance and aggression. Everything from the size of your letters to how closely you space words can reveal intricate details of your personality. Some companies commission this analysis before hiring new employees. This method is even sometimes used to help couples see if they are compatible. Here are some examples. If you write with tiny letters, you are likely to have a timid and introverted personality. If you write with large letters, you are the complete opposite, outgoing, confident and attention-seeking. Studies also suggest that people who space their words widely like freedom and independence, whereas those who write with small spaces prefer to be among others and hate to be alone. You are now given one minute to answer questions 19 and 20. You will listen to the talk again. Check your answers. Did you know that your handwriting can tell a lot about you? The study of handwriting, or graphology, has been practiced for hundreds of years. Graphologists study writing samples to determine personality types and they are able to read how a person is like through the handwriting. From physiological conditions like high blood pressure or schizophrenia to personality traits like dominance and aggression. Everything from the size of your letters to how closely you space words can reveal intricate details of your personality. Some companies commission this analysis before hiring new employees. This method is even sometimes used to help couples see if they are compatible. Here are some examples. If you write with tiny letters, you are likely to have a timid and introverted personality. If you write with large letters, you are the complete opposite, outgoing confident and attention-seeking. Studies also suggest that people who space their words widely like freedom and independence, whereas those who write with small spaces prefer to be among others and hate to be alone.